first thing. My seat comes off by removing two number six Allen head bolts right here, and then the seat's gonna pull back and lift off. And one on this side. And then the seat should push back and lift off. Push back, lift off. Next, we're going to use a 5 millimeter Allen to pull off the speedometer. It's just going to slide forward. Lift out the way. And the side cover. So, I'm going to pinch off the fuel line. I'm going to take this off here because my gas shutoff doesn't work fully. So normally you can just shut that off and then pull the line there. I need to pull it here. I'm just going to gently pinch off that line. Just keep in mind if that line collapses, you might have to change that line. Pull off the clamp. Got a 12 millimeter bolt holding the tank on. Gas line's pulled, that bolt's out. The tank's gonna lift up. It has two C clamps up on the front that go against uh, two rubber bushings. So I'm gonna lift up and wiggle out. There's gonna be one vent line back here. And I'll try to get you guys to be able to see it, but I don't wanna drop the tank. That's that vent line. Let's get the coil out the way. Two 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolts. Two coil wires. This one's a blue lead or a green lead on mine and the wire to it is blue. This one is a black lead and the wire to it is black with a white tracer. those two off and then put this out the way just like the other one. Now let's take this cover off so we can get to the throttle linkages. Throttle linkages are on this bracket. There's one, two, number two Phillips head screws and then a number one Phillips head screw down here. I'm pretty sure this is, uh, and if somebody remembers what it is, drop it down in the comments, but there's a Japanese a Phillips head screwdriver that has a special name and I'm fairly confident that that's what this needs. I'm just using standard number two and number one Phillips. Swap over to the number one. What we're looking at here is there is two cables back in here. All right, those two right there attached to these two cables right here. All I'm gonna do is since this bracket's loose, I'm gonna pull it to give myself a little bit of slack, rotate the cable, careful not to pinch it, and just pull it out of there. Same thing on the bottom one. Rotate it down. You can move that throttle, once you have one of them out, you can move this, this throttle to give yourself some slack and just pull that out the way. You'll see that there's a, a vacuum hose here with a white dot that is for fresh air intake it is actually um uh, well on my bike it's actually where the gasoline was coming out of it's not supposed to um, anyway this doesn't connect to anything so just remember it's got a white dot doesn't connect to anything while we're here let's get the choke lever loose number five allen goes into a bracket behind the cylinder head right here hopefully the light's not messing you guys up anyway there's an arm that goes back behind this screw It's got a funny looking head on it. 
So I just pull that arm. The arm just now pulls straight out of that head, just like that. Before my heater broke, I had a pin that stuck out here that that round one came off of. And then the ground side is this spade lug. So the green wire went to the ground and then this brown wire went to the heater uh, for the carburetor. And now we're on the air filter side. Let's get the air filter off. There's a Phillips head screw for this clamp right there. Just loosen it up on about four or five turns. Then there's two 10 millimeter bolts, one down here, one back over here. And the ratchet's on it right now. Let's pull those loose. You don't have to take them all the way out, just pull them loose. And then that air box should slide off. Let's see. All right, generally this piece right here is uh, attached into here, so we're gonna reattach that as well. So this should have come off. We should have been able to pull that off with the box. So let's go and get that fastened. Let's just tuck all this back in. Or this boot has a lip on it all the way around. So just like that. Put that to the side. For this air box, there is a screw hidden up under here. Okay, that is going to the boot that comes up into here. It comes off the top of the carburetor. I'm just gonna loosen that up. Okay, so that's the top boot on the carburetor on this side. And the same thing holds true on this side. Here's that other boot going to that same air box. Here's that clamp on top of the carburetor. Let's just loosen that up. Pull that boot off the top there. Be careful you don't lose these clamps. Once you've loosened them enough, they may try to fall out. Now this one should be loose. I'm gonna make sure the other side pushes up and I'm gonna pull this box off of that side. There's a breather hose on the back side of that thing. There's the other clamp. Let's just put those back on for now. Let's set the air box out the way. This is a coolant hose. Let's just, we're just gonna push it up out the way if it's flexible enough. Let's pull off this, this hose. I'm fairly confident is a, like an emissions hose, a PCV system. Either that or it's actually pulling vacuum on here. No, I'm actually leaning towards it pulls vacuum over here. Let's get these, this clamp off of here. Pull that clamp back. Pull that back up. And then we've got one on the other side as well. This was uh, this went to the back of that air box that I just pulled off. And then this hose here is the other side. For that, I feel like I said, I'm fairly confident it's for that uh, vacuum actuator, for the carburetor. So pull those two loose. This right here is my choke cable that we already pulled loose earlier. Let's just get it out the way. that choke out the way. Let's pull off my heater circuit on this side. That one pulls straight out. It's a round pin. And then this is the ground side. Same colors as the other side. This is my choke. This is also my choke cable. You'll see it routes around the carburetor, comes out the front. So this side's disconnected, disconnected, disconnected. So on this side, while we're here, this right here, this boot is the intake so the carburetor into the intake into the cylinder this boot right here is extremely important if you have a leak here it will cause the bike to run lean and extremely hot so the clamp's trying to turn on me all i want to do is just try to hold it so it doesn't spin away there we go Loosen that up. Fighting to get these out of here is gonna be a challenge in itself. If you can take apart from up here, go for it. Mine does not. I've already had this apart, and I can tell you that it's a royal pain. It's got it moving a little bit. Let me get the other side loose, and the carburetor should come loose. And this side is down here at the bottom.
Let's pull that one decently loose. All right, what else have I forgotten? Um, I know that there is a hose on the back side of the carburetor here. So let's wiggle the carburetor and get it to come loose. And like I said, I think there's another hose up here in the middle. I think it would be easier if I only if I loosened the top clamps, but I can tell you that I already tried and I just about stripped it trying to get it to come loose. While that's off though, we might end up doing that. So lift up your coolant line, get it out the way, start working your carburetor out. Like I said, it's not done yet. Okay, what do we have left? Looks like we have a fuel hose coming up out of here pull that line off This is my choke cable and the whole carburetor is off in my hands now. Let's get on the bench and get it torn apart. Truth time, uh, I assembled it in this condition and thought I was done, Put spent all that time putting it all back together, brought it outside, tried to fire it up and the uh, it just leaked gas everywhere. It was doing one of two things. It was either coming out of this gasket right here, which yep it looks like crap it's uh all uh flattened out and it's got still got trash built up on it things like that um or it was leaking out of the uh, needle and seat weren't shutting off one of the two so i ordered a rebuild kit and we're going to try to install this rebuild kit what i learned about the rebuild kit there are two jets in here apparently the front cylinder gets a i think it's like a 104 and the rear one gets like a 108 something like that anyway they're different right and the jets themselves should have numbers on them so what i plan on doing is pulling doing one side at a time and we're going to change everything we can possibly find but the jet that has the uh numbers on it we're likely going to put that back in my most important thing was this gasket and that new needle and seat so i'm hoping that that's my biggest uh, culprits and i'm gonna be cautious about doing the rest of it but even after the ultrasonic cleaner this thing had a really hard time um, i'm going to try to show you all the right way versus my failed way get the float out look at there that that needle that I had cleaned and done everything to was stuck you I mean you guys didn't see me clean it all out but anyway basically I had polished everything I had tried to clean this the best I could I don't know if there was some more trash in the line or you know I didn't do as good a job as I thought whatever else anyway we're gonna get a new needle and seat we are going to take out the that appears to be about a seven millimeter we're gonna take out that jet that jet I think they gave me one of those as well kit comes with a lot of great stuff Including a, uh, looks like there's a filter inside that bag. So I'm guessing when I take this, this out, we're gonna find that there's a screened filter up inside there. It's not a bad kit for the price. I mean, I, I think I got both of them for, I don't remember if it was 20 a piece or 20 for both. I don't know, something like that. Okay, I've got a 10 millimeter swivel. It's a thin wall. Uh, I think it's 3 8 is what it feels like, but I don't have a uh, thin wall 3 8 Or if I do, I can't find it right now. Yep, sure enough, there's your screen, there's your seat. It's fairly clean inside there. Whoops, there's also a gasket. Let's spray that out real fast. There's a jet and then a 
not positive what this extension's called. But holy cow, it's already dirty again. This just goes to show me. You can clean them out, but if you don't uh, follow it up and get it completely clean, you're wasting your time, which is what I did. Pull all those. Just putting all this on the dirty side, see what we come up with. See, that would be that one, that one, that one. I don't see this one. I've got lots of O-rings in the kit, and I have a spring, which I bet you this spring is for this, whenever I find that. There is something right there. About the right size too. I have a feeling that this mixture screw, um, uh, I'm calling it a pilot jet, I think it's a mixture screw, probably goes right there and is probably under that welch plug. They did not give me a new welch plug for that. They did give me a welch plug for this to put that back in after this is adjusted. Looking at the size of that plug, if it's in there tight, drilling it is probably my only option. I'd like to drill a small hole and see if I can possibly pry it out of there. pilot hole let's see yep looks like there's a mixture screw setting down inside there let's go ahead and get that out of there let me see if I can get a pick and pry it out it's in there pretty good I think I'm gonna have to drill it some more make it collapse if I screw up the side though I won't be able to get the welch plug back in Nowhere close to the head of the crew. There we go. Looks like the Welch plug started turning. There we go. I don't like having all those metal shavings around. Once I get this apart, we're gonna get over to a clean work area. To count the number of turns. So this is the side facing the choke handle which would be the left side of the bike when you're sitting on it. That's the side I'm working on right now. Half, one, one and a half, one and three quarter, one and seven eighths, something like that. What's in here? Yep, spring and a adjustment screw. There's something brass inside there. I don't know if it comes out. It doesn't appear to come out. Brand new mixture screw, brand new spring. I do not see an O-ring on these. Tighten it on down until it just touches. All right, just touches right there. Get my visual indicator where the line is. Half, one, half, that would be two, so come back a little bit. I'd like to know why uh, they've got welch plugs on there. We're gonna leave those off because we wanna make sure that the thing's not running rich. Filter goes on the end just like that. Oh, it kinda of snaps on there. All right, gonna need this washer, or gasket I should call it, is really what it is. Gets that sealed up. This one, this is one with stamping on it. Wait one sec. Let's say it says uh, 40S. Can't tell if there's something in front of that or not. Like maybe there's a star 40S. Tell you what, we're gonna still put this in. I don't mind, it's my bike. I don't mind taking it back apart again if I have to. Frustrating, but it's not a big deal. That's slightly different. I mean, everything looks identical, except there's two holes on the very tip of this one that don't exist on this one. 
It's weird as I also see something on the inside of this one. Tell you what, let's put it in anyway. Why not? Snug that up. Yeah, anything written on this one? Yep, this one's got something written on it too. 108S maybe? Okay, I can tell by eye that this jet is much more restricted than my original. I'm actually gonna use my original. This is the largest jet, so this should be the wide open jet you run too lean you have a chance of burning the bike up that is one of them that i'm going to use the original I mean, visually i can tell there's a difference i don't know that that second set of holes at the very bottom is going to cause much damage um, but this thing is extremely corroded and whatnot it's not pitted so i am going to save it but it's extremely corroded let's see you're going to put the float back on like that kind of cheating but not very scientific either so this thing's gonna go get the wire wheel treatment because like I said I have a feeling that it was either this or that needle and seat that caused my biggest problem on a lawnmower, it's not that big a deal if this gasket is not great. Because ideally, the gas should never reach the gasket. You know what I mean? If it overflowed. Yeah, look at the cracking and everything. But on a motorcycle where the carburetors are hanging like that, of course this gasket's extremely important. And then on top of that, it's not just gravity fed. It does have a pump that pumps fuel to it. I'm going to take a little bit of time and clean this up on the wire wheel. Being very gentle because it is aluminum. And I'll be right back with you guys. Quite a bit cleaner. Used a uh, pick and a wire uh, brass brush and a brass wire wheel to try to get this as clean as possible. Put my brand new gasket on here. So let's get. All right, get that sealed up. And the one that has the uh, closest to the center of the carburetor gets one of these. Clamp like that. There very likely is a torque spec for this. And I would encourage you to look it up and possibly invest in the screwdriver with the torque setting on it. I don't have one here at the house. So I'm going to do the whole mental and feel torque on it. Click, 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 click. There you go. For those that wanted to hear the clicking of the torque wrench. There's this little bitty gasket. There's a bunch of O-rings. And I imagine if I take apart the entire carburetor, I will see those O-rings. Um, I'm going to put the Welch plug cap in here for now. This, this basically goes right into that main jet on the bottom side of this rubber cup. So we're gonna take that out, see if that's replaceable, and get a clean one installed. Oh, there you go. I thought it was more stuck than that. Let's gently pull this out. Grab the center cup, and then that right there is the placement needle I was talking about. Down inside here, there is a spring-loaded star wheel that you just basically push down and turn the eighth of a turn, and then allows that spring to come up like that. And then that needle should push right out. While you're in here, look for any sort of tears on this rubber damper. It uses vacuum to move that. 
Well, truthfully, I don't remember if it's uh, if it's vacuum or pressure. Anyway, it needs to have a good uh, air seal or else it's not going to operate properly. Just put the spring back in, quarter turn, put it back together. And while we're here, that's the bottom of the um, emulsion tube that we just installed. It's right there. Let's spray that real fast. That should move very easily, and I, I felt a little bit of a friction pulling that out of there. Just make sure. That's better. Some old gas, if I had to guess. Let's line all this up. Let's tuck it in place so that it sits. Lining up that eyelet. There's a groove right there that needs to line up with that jet. I'm calling it a jet. I have no idea. It's a passageway for, I'm guessing, air. The vacuum we were talking about. I'm sure it has a different term. And then that side should be complete. So you can see that that moves up and down easily, no problems. So that should be pretty close. I got, I have a really strong feeling that we don't want to put those Welch plugs in yet because uh, if there's any differences in these uh, passages, it's going to cause it to run a lot different. Let's get this other side uninstalled. Oh, that needle came out okay. okay. There's my seat seat gasket and the filter did not come out my filter jet star 105s i think the other one said 108 let's count the turns on this one half one and a half literally just over one and a half let's put the screen filter on the bottom of this on the bottom of the seat and then we have a seat gasket This one doesn't have those uh, holes at the bottom again. It's really bothering me that, that it's missing like half the holes. But what I have noticed is that when this seats up on here, it's slightly different and it feels more machined than this side. This side feels like it's worn out or whatever. This one seems to feel like it actually seats up. So I'm gonna take a chance. Like I said, I'm probably gonna regret it, but I'm gonna take a chance. What's the main jet look like? Again, a visible difference between them. So I am going to use the old jet. I mean, I don't know if somebody changed the jets to uh, match exhaust pipes or something like that along the way, but it used to run pretty doggone good. That's all I'm trying to do is just rematch what I had. But like I said, several reviews all said the same thing about the jets not being labeled and being a different size. So, and then the front and rear do have a different size. I'm not over tightening. I'm just trying to be very, very careful when I'm tightening. I just want to make sure I feel it. Check a couple times, just make sure that's the bottom. Half, one, one and a half, just a hair more. A new needle. Drop that in. I'm putting the, the arm of the float through the uh, hook that's on the needle so that it captures it. To close one off.
gaskets in bad shape. 2003, and I believe this is the first gas carb kit that's been in it. Let's get that clean. Okay, you got this side mostly clean. New gasket, let's get that installed. On this side, I broke off the heater accidentally, of course. I can access this later on if I really want to. I am a fair weather rider, so I'm very unlikely I'll be riding this when it's cold out anyway, which is probably why I'm in this predicament to begin with. But anyway, you just unscrew this heater and put a new one in. They run for about 25 bucks on uh, Amazon, and you can reach that from the outside without having to pull the carburetor off. So let's get this new gasket tucked in here. Make sure the gasket doesn't come loose. that back on let's put this through here just like that and that see that little rib right there anyway that points to the direction of that uh, little vent on the back side of this cap don't be like me and and tap on it with uh without your hand over it There we go, that's a little more controlled. There's that vent that I was just talking about. Gently pull it all loose. Pull that out. All right, this little piece inside here, push in, give it a, a eighth of a turn, let it up. Not just like that. Let's spray that out. Drop the new one in. And we're gonna drop that in. Spray on the bottom of it. All right, and then just push down, quarter turn, and it locks into place, just like that. that goes in and out easily line up that gasket tuck it all back in make sure that that gap right there lines up with that spring first I'm holding pressure down And verify that that works like it's supposed to. Nothing's bound up. Let's get this thing back on the bike and try it now, see if it leaks gas all over the place. Okay, while I had the carburetor on the bench, I was able to pull the boots loose off of the carburetor. I made sure that I put them on the exact same orientation. And then if you look at the, uh, intake boot itself which by the way these are a little bit stiffer than i think they should be and that might be one of the reasons i'm having such a hard time getting uh, getting it to come loose but there is a keyway on the bottom of this uh boot and it lines up with a groove right here at the bottom of the intake on both of those so make sure that those are in line because the boot is kind of offset and you definitely need to put it back in the same orientation that. I've got my clamps to where the Phillips head on this one is at the top and then at the bottom it's in the middle and on this one again the bottom one is here in the middle of the valley and the top one is on the outside edge. Orient your carburetor so the throttle connection is on this side of the bike. The boots that I pulled off are here and here. There is a hose that came from the gas line and we want to make sure that we capture before we get too far. So let's tuck it down in here for now. All I'm going to do is work the carburetor back in place. The choke lever comes up like that. Your orientation should be something like that. 
comes up that angle um, and it wraps around the back of the carburetor. So let's get that somewhat in place. And then we're just gonna push hoses out the way and wiggle this in place. Take your time if you get hung up, make sure you know what you're hitting. Alright, that's pretty close. Let's get that gas line on before I can't reach it anymore, okay? I believe it goes underneath that choke. And then it touches. I'll get the light here in just a second. Okay, that gas line came right down and it attaches back to this intake down here. See that, it goes right there. It's a brown barb fitting right there. The gas line goes underneath here, attaches right on top of there. Let's slide the clamp down and get it in place. Okay. Hopefully y'all can see that. Um, we've got other hoses that we're gonna want to connect, but I'd like to make sure that I can get this carburetor mounted onto these boots before we get too far. Just want to make sure everything's out the way. Alright, so that one's kind of lined up. Alright, so this side's lined up. How's the other side look, guys? And gals? Yeah. That's actually a lot closer than when the when this is the only thing on there because they're really cattywampus and you have to really wiggle it to get it on there. All I'm gonna do is evenly apply pressure downwards, and I'm trying to put that one that way. And this side of the carburetor that way. Okay, my side's in. Do you all get yours in? Yeah, let me help. I got yours, I got mine. Tighten up those clamps while I can still reach it. Yeah, that was a lot easier than the trying to take it off of the bottom clamps, but like I said, I couldn't do the top clamps. I had really tried, and uh, until I actually had it sitting on the bench and fastened, I couldn't uh, get it to budge. I'm gonna do the other side real quick. Now this next part I'm gonna do out of logical order because uh, it has bitten me already. I'm gonna snake the choke lever back into position. Because if it's not right, the cable will be extremely hard to move and you won't know until you've got everything back together. So I like to check that the choke still works, and then I'm gonna put the throttle back on and I'm gonna make sure it still works. Pulls very easy. Springs back. Um, if it doesn't, always check to make sure these boots haven't popped out on this side or the other side, but this actually pulls really easy. Get the wires attached before I put the throttle on. Makes it a little easier for y'all to see and makes it easier for me to get to. So this is the side that my heater broke off. So this wire here for the heater is just gonna sit down here and I'll hook up the ground. And whenever I go to replace it, I'm just taking off that heater plug right there. It's like 20 bucks on uh, Amazon, 25 bucks, something like that. Okay. So my open air line can just sit right off to the side like that. Let's hook up the vacuum hose. So, because I had it together one time, and the uh, what was happening is the throttle was actually hitting the choke line, uh, causing the throttle not to work well and causing the choke not to work well. Uh, you can move the throttle when you're working on your first one and drop that post just in there like that. See that? All right, just drop that post right in there. Twist the cable until it drops into that groove right there. 
All right, now the bottom one's done. The top one's a little harder because it doesn't have as much play. Top one in, rotate the cable until it lines up with that line. Push it in the groove, let it spring back. Then you can pull this bracket back. So we'll tighten this up and then make sure that my throttle is clear. Two number twos. One number one. Check the throttle. Works just like it's supposed to. Springs back. Choke still works. And cables are on this side. Let's go to the other side and finish hooking up the rest of it. Right, so this vacuum hose on this side. Hose right here, it's gonna to go to the back side of the air box I'm getting ready to show you. This is the breather line for the tank that we took off earlier. We want to hook up these two cables, the ground lug, and the heater cable. I'm gonna be sneaking these two hoses, one into here and one through there and down into there. At the very end, I'm gonna attach, before I get it fully buttoned up, I'm gonna attach this hose to this barb right here. Getting to this all is kind of tricky. So I've even, as I was wiggling in there, I've even pulled this hose off before. You can't put the hoses on after the fact, but you can attach them like this, sneak them back through, and then try to get them back in place. Let's try to slide that one through this hole. Attach this little hose here. Okay, I've got this hose somewhat in place. It's tucked through. I have the vacuum hose on, on the back side of here. Now I'm gonna try to work this hose onto the top of this part of the carburetor. I got my back one on and I had to clamp on backwards, so I gotta put it back the right way and then put it back together. We'll get to that other clamp here in just a second. So we're gonna push this up onto here, and then this tab right here is gonna go on that, and then the other tab goes on this one over here. So it's kind of a sweeping action. Let's tighten up the two 10 millimeter bolts. Tighten up the hose clamp. While I'm here, this uh, bumper, that's what your gas tank goes around. It goes right around that bumper right there. This is the other boot. Let's get on, on top of the carburetor. This connection, you want it to be uh, clean and tight but it's not as critical as the other one we were talking about. This is just the critical part of this one is just keeping dirt out of your engine. And I'm sure it'll mess with the uh, mixture a little bit too because you've changed how much air is being felt here because some of it goes through the filter, but we're talking minimal there. And a leak on the other boot would be drastic. So I've got a green tracer and that goes to my blue wire down here at the bottom and then the black wire with the black tracer. Excuse me, the black wire, the black lead, black wire with the tracer. Two 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, that's my vent line. Let's put this cover back on. These are number one Phillips head.
hopefully somebody puts in the comments what type of uh, Phillips head that Japanese one we're talking about are. Because I need to buy some myself. Looks like we're up to putting the uh, gas tank on. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it or not. I'm going to attach this to the bottom of the tank. I'm going to take the tank and push it onto these two grommets here. Wiggle it back and forth until I line up with this bolt hole back here. Because I'm on a lift, the steering wheel keeps going back and forth, so I need to be able to modify that as well, or mess with it as well. I tore my tore my fuel line. I had a feeling that was coming. Let me change that while I can. Rotate all the gas forward. Okay, I put another three eighths fuel line on here. I've got it clamped. No, I didn't learn my lesson. I guess I just don't have a. Uh, fuel clamp handy. Get my vacuum line on, my, excuse me, my uh, vent line. I'm gonna feel for the two grommets and the clamps up front. I'm gonna wiggle the tank and push forward. Just wiggling and pushing the tank forward. Before I lose too much fuel, let's get this fuel line on here. Move that uh, spring so that the hose doesn't crease and collapse. The original hose had like a liner to it. Let's get the 12 millimeter bolt on the tank back in. There's a groove right here that fits on this rubber mount right here. Two bolt holes there should line up. Come on, back on. And get my seat put back on. All right, let's give it a try. I'm just gonna start it up. I'm not going for a ride because I'm not dressed for it. Ignition's on, excuse me, the run stop is on, key is on, fuel is on, choke is out. I'm in neutral. Let's see what we get. Sounds a lot better, maybe a little bit rich. 
you guys get something out of the video, I really appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks for hanging out with me for the day. Don't forget to smash that like button and uh, hit the notification bell for future videos. Catch you on the next one.